Ever wondered how fast electrical impulses travel through your heart? I mean, at what speed do these electrical impulses travel, and why do they differ across different parts of the heart? Today, we're diving headfirst into the heart's lightning speed rhythms. We'll answer your burning questions about how fast electrical impulses travel through the heart's conduction system, why it's crucial to understand this speed, and whether abnormalities in conduction could spell trouble for your heart's health. So, buckle up as we embark on this thrilling journey through the heart's electrical storm. In the heart's conduction system, electrical impulses travel at varying speeds, depending on the specific structures involved. For instance, the sinoatrial node, often referred to as the heart's natural pacemaker, initiates the electrical impulse at a relatively slow speed compared to other parts of the conduction system. But when it comes to the ventricles, things speed up significantly, almost 20 to 30 times faster than in the atria. Now, isn't that intriguing? But why the sudden surge in speed? Before we dive into the intricacies of the heart's electrical system, let's address the fundamental question. At what speed do electrical impulses travel through our heart? First up, we have the sinoatrial node, or SA node. This tiny but mighty node initiates the electrical impulse that kickstarts each heartbeat, with a speed ranging from 0.03 to 1.0 meters per second. The impulse from the SA node spreads through the atria, signaling them to contract. This initial step sets the stage for the heart's rhythmic dance. Next, the impulse travels to the atrioventricular node, where it encounters a slightly faster pathway. Moving at speeds between 0.1 to 1.0 meters per second, the impulse journeys through specialized pathways within the atria before reaching the AV node. Now let's pause briefly at the AV node. Here, the electrical impulse encounters a temporary delay, allowing for the atria to fully contract before the ventricles begin their contraction. With a speed of 0.02 to 0.05 meters per second, this delay ensures synchronized contractions between the atria and ventricles. Once the delay is complete, the impulse continues its journey along the bundle of his, a pathway crucial for transmitting signals to the ventricles. Here, the speed picks up significantly, reaching approximately one meter per second. The bundle of his swiftly delivers the signal to the Purkinje fibers, the final leg of the journey. And finally, the Purkinje fibers spread the impulse throughout the ventricles at a speed of approximately one meter per second. Remarkably, the conduction speed in the ventricles is about 10 to 30 times faster than that in the atria, ensuring efficient and coordinated contractions for effective blood circulation. Now, what happens if this rhythm goes off track? What if the signals in our heart are delayed or speed up for some reason? If signals are delayed, it's like the beat of the music getting out of sync, leading to problems like feeling faint or dizzy. For instance, if the AV node delays the signal too much, it can cause heart block. And when signals speed up, it's like the music playing too fast, causing issues like a rapid heartbeat or a feeling fluttery in conditions like Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. The heart signals take shortcuts, making it beat too quickly. So, if our heart's rhythm isn't right, whether it's too slow or too fast, it can cause some serious problems. That's why it's crucial to keep an eye on our heart's rhythm and make sure everything stays in tune. Now, let's talk about how we measure the speed of these electrical impulses through our heart. It's actually done using something called ECG intervals. You see, an electrocardiogram, or ECG, is a test that measures the electrical activity of your heart and the different parts of the ECG tracing represent the speed at which these impulses travel through your heart. For example, the PR interval on an ECG represents the time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the SA node to the AV node. If this interval is prolonged, it could indicate a delay in conduction, while a shortened PR interval might suggest faster conduction. Similarly, the QRS complex represents the time it takes for the impulse to travel from the AV node through the bundle of his and Purkinje fibers to the ventricles. Changes in the duration of the QRS complex can also indicate abnormalities in conduction speed. So by analyzing these intervals on an ECG, healthcare providers can assess the speed and rhythm of your heart's electrical activity. It's like reading the musical score of your heart's rhythm, helping to identify any potential issues and guide treatment decisions. And that's why ECG intervals are so important. They provide valuable insights into the speed and efficiency of your heart's electrical system, helping to ensure your heart stays in perfect harmony. 
Now that we've explored how the speed of electrical impulses affects our heart's rhythm and what it looks like on an ECG, are you ready to dive deeper into understanding heart conditions and their ECG manifestation? Just click on the next one. Thank you.